previously on Heavy Rain. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, age between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, age between 9 and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned. In rainwater. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geoprofiling any easier. my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. That I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about Four fifteen. Yeah, that's it. Four fifteen. I remember exactly because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat.
a black coat. And a pair of pants. Green pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I... I don't know. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Now on every rain. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. Gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. 
no time to waste. I need to find out what's in that locker. The luggage lockers. They're on the other side of the station. I... I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. Line 18, box number 3. Line 18, 
box number three. Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. 
He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why it gives him an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? Your vast experience hasn't prevented eight victims from being murdered. Fucking asshole! That's enough. You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted.
Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Naaman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. You were arrested in a case where a child disappeared from a park. What exactly happened? I'm innocent. I have nothing to do with those murders. I was in the park because God spoke to me. I was arrested because I am the chosen one. That's all. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Oh, we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? Blake, what are you doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders That's you to enough. go and find Leave new prey, him doesn't alone. he? He needs more and more. No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told you to go and find that kid in the park. Carter, the boy shit! Is torn Are you him out of your all mind? Night long. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop! Stop! That's enough! So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? <laughs> You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! You're not gonna kill the Antichrist with a revolver, Nathaniel. He's much too powerful for Antichrist that. Antichrist my ass! Get that gun out of my face! Keep calm. Everything is going to be fine, Nathaniel. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. I'm here to help you, Nathaniel. To get rid of the voices in your head. But you have to trust me. Christ all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire, and may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Back away, slowly. Drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord. I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would have just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. <laughs> Maybe not, but most of the time it helps.